everyone and welcome to another video. I'm going to share with you today our classroom and I'll also share with you another idea if you don't have enough space for a classroom. So let's get into the tour. Okay, so right now this area is also used for our co-op. Um, if you've seen in the last couple of videos that I have made, this uh, we actually started a, co a homeschool co-op with some kids in the local community. This co-op is also a Bible study for us moms. So the moms and I meet, I run the Bible study and I lead that every week. The moms and I meet in the living room. This is actually our downstairs class or our upstairs classroom. The living room is downstairs and we meet there as moms. And then each week the moms rotate to teach the kids. Right now we have about 25 students and 10 moms, 11 including myself. It's getting bigger than this is our second semester actually starting this co-op. If you want to follow it, I have a link below. Um, you can follow our Facebook page. It's called Plant to Harvest and you can find the, I'll have a text right here for the handle on Facebook. You can follow that if you are interested in uh, following along on different things that we're doing from a, a public standpoint. You can only, there's a group, but that's only for those who are actively participating. So I will show you, basically we have a little area for the preschool kids. It's kind of like a one room schoolhouse. We have kids ages two to 12, pretty much. Um, and so it's uh, definitely a one room schoolhouse type of, of approach. And so I will show you everything that we have going on in our classroom. And funnily enough, today actually was co-op day. So things are still a little messy from the toys that we had. I have all of these little action figures that Liam used to play with that I added to the co-op group. I have this, if you can see, this curtain goes to the rest of my upstairs. It's closed off for the kids. I have this doll gate that I actually use for Sawyer, but it's here also to keep the kids from going through the curtain because Jason's office is back there and all of our other personal items are back there. And we simply can't close the door, so we have this curtain here. This is actually Actually the door to the stairs. This is a kind of a walk-in closet that I use as an attic. And here, um, this is actually new to our co-op. We'll be moving into another, a couple rooms in my local church. So this is new. This is a sensory bin for the little preschool kids to keep them kind of busy listening to the lesson. Here we have Sawyer's and Miles's dog bed for when we're up here, they can just relax this is printout skeletons that we did, the kids and I did, a couple years ago when we were learning anatomy, when I believe Reagan was preschool and Liam was first grade. Might have been third grade in kindergarten, second grade in kindergarten. And then here we have, I've set up a little coffee table. We've got toys for the co-op, board games, books. The toddlers and preschoolers kind of set up here with um, coloring pages and crayons here. And then here we have, we have a half bathroom. We have clock for helping to tell time and then cursive letters. This, I got these actually from Hobby Lobby. A half bath, as you can see, Reagan loves to paint <laughs> and she does a lot of her artwork here. I then have this, it's like a vinyl chalk. You just, it's like a, a peel and stick chalkboard. Um, I got that from Amazon. Lovely curtains that I bought the other day. I have a whiteboard, erase board, these printables. I actually, except for the welcome sign, I got that from Hobby Lobby from something else. But these three printables, as well as other signs, are actually available in my shop, and that link is down below also. You can get them individually or in a group. And then here, what I have is extra papers for book reports for the kids. I encourage a lot of book reports. They actually get paid to do book reports. That might seem confrontational to some people or not. I'm not sure, but Liam's chapter books, if he reads a chapter book and then does his report, he gets $5. Reagan, if she does her book report, um, she can't quite read all of her books yet. And spelling is, she needs help with spelling and everything. 
anything. So for her needing my help with the spelling and reading and everything, she would get $3. They've actually done very well with this and they've read lots of books because of that. And I don't see, as far as you know, our family goes, one day maybe they'll be writers and they'll get paid to write books. So it just kind of gives them incentive to learn more and to read and a lot of the times in history kids learned the most by reading all of the things so that's just kind of where I stand on that. And then this is a two shelf folder system where I keep Liam's work underneath and Reagan's on the top shelf. We've got a globe, a little bit of scripture writing and all of kind of like a cubby situation going on. This table actually was made for me by my parents. They made this themselves. So it is definitely precious to me. Uh, it's got shelves, little cubby shelves all along. And with this being my side, there's like two shelves here. And then each child has their own cubby on that side. And then for color, up, we added a an additional six foot table and the kids all just kind of gather all around the older kids probably first grade to fifth or sixth grade they all gather around this table and then the preschoolers toddlers and preschoolers go over to that coffee table we have a designated teacher and then one mom also is is there to assist because we like to keep a ratio of about 10 to one. And then here's all of our little posters. The kids actually made this when we were studying the ocean. We did the the um, ocean layers and, and they actually, we found images of these sea creatures and they either colored them or just drew their own for which ones fit in which zone of the ocean. We've got our world map, United States map, human body, solar system. You can find this in a package at Amazon. Numbers chart, time, money. We have our Roman numerals right here that I printed out that I found. This rug is very helpful for co-op and a lot of the times when they're doing their lesson, they actually just sit in a circle around here also. There's a lot of room. And then here is the library I was telling you about that I'm starting to do. I've kind of got it categorized by by subjects. This actually is a book of musical instruments that I used with the kids when they were in like um, preschool, kindergarten, first grade. I've not really used them in a couple years. And, um, and then there's, this is where I kind of keep art projects. Here is our chapter books. Here is our seasonal books. You can find Christmas stuff here. You can find Thanksgiving. I've got this new one for Halloween this year that I've not read yet, but I will this year. I just recently purchased it and I've heard a lot of really good things about it. Berenstain Bears Easter Story. We've got our electric sharpener, pencils, index cards here. I've got a tub full of flash cards. These are number learning wraps. You can find them on on Osborne Books and More that's actually called Paper Pie now. And you can find I'm actually a consultant. I pretty much just get, do it for the discount codes. But if you are interested, that link is down below also under Paper Pie. Here we have kind of like art and just random fun books. Like there's Colonial Kids Activities, Entrepreneurial Academy, Coder Academy, The Unhurry Book, The Never Bored Book, Travel Games, Busy Book, things like that. Here we have all of our language arts so far that we've used. And then also this was very helpful when the kids were learning to write instead of using paper over and over, this is a dry erase board. And then down below, I, this is where we keep all of our math stuff. And it's, it's just very helpful for me to keep things categorized and organized. And then here we have our learning board games. Also, I wanted to, <laughs> Abe Lincoln is here and then I've got my laminator there. Here we have our Bible section, all books that we've used for Bible class. Here is some science kits. Actually, when I was looking a couple videos ago, I was looking in Amazon for a kit. I actually did buy this off of Amazon and I will link down to with that below. And if you actually um, see anything in this video that you want to know more about, comment down below and I will send you a link straight to that. And this section is, we've just now started biography class. 
I'm gonna recent I'm gonna do a video soon about what we're doing for our curriculum. And we recently started biography class. We're gonna do heroes of a uh, kind of like a, a loop of heroes of history and heroes of the faith in modern day times. And so right now we're learning about George Washington Carver. Um, this was the end of last semester where we learned about David Livingstone. And so that was a hero of the faith. Right now we're doing um, hero, Heroes of History, which is George Washington Carver. And, um, and then next we'll do Heroes of Faith again. Here are all of our reading level books. Step into reading and I can read books. These are our books that we used from a little company called Winter Promise. The kids used that for kindergarten and first grade. That was probably a good jumping off, kind of like a curriculum in a box type of situation. So if you're just beginning homeschooling, I would definitely recommend that company, especially if you've got little ones, winterpromise.com. Uh, they offer a curriculum in a box. You don't have to do much work or effort. And it's really handy just to kind of like have them send you what you need. You work with what they give you. They give you a parent guide. Um, and I do recommend that. That was very helpful for me in, um, like I said, when we first started, I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea what we wanted to do as a homeschool family, how we wanted to learn, what my teaching approach was. And that was just very helpful with just kind of discovering who we were as a homeschool family. So if you are stuck, I recommend that also. If you have any questions on how to get started homeschool, please feel free to comment down below or you can um, email me. If you go down to my blog and sign up for the newsletter, you can also email me directly doing that. Um, so yeah. I'll get back to this, but it's I, I'm definitely here to help you. And then here we just have kind of like faith-based family, good good for the family books. We've got a few of the veggie tales that the kids had before. These are just family friendly, not necessarily Christ-centered, but more value and moral centered. The extremely greedy dragon, obviously it's not good to be greedy. These books here, building Christian character. So just random books that I've kind of found at Goodwill. I really love Goodwill finding books. They're only a dollar for kids books, so I like to do that. And here is our history section. This is kind of where I am really trying to grow our library. I'm Ever since we've started homeschooling, I've really enjoyed history. I've learned so much more than I never thought I knew before. And so I've gotten these, some of them I've gotten from Goodwill, some of them I've gotten on Amazon. This, I would say starting these books over is kind of geography. And then these books over is just, um, or is history, either world history, American history, people. Most of these that I, that I have here of who was or what was, a lot of them I found at Goodwill. Some I found in on Amazon and other places, but yeah, we're just trying to get a good collection here. And then the final shelf is all of our science books, anything that pertains to science. We've got several over here that I've gotten from Usborne. A lot of these actually I've gotten from Usborne. They're really good with science. Let me just take a look a little bit. So we've got See Inside, How Things Work. I really love the See Inside books. I'm going to be soon making a video of a an unboxing of some Usborne books that I'm going to be getting that I think would be really helpful for a homeschool family. Plus I'll touch more on the, on the books that I already have that aren't retired yet. These science ex experiments are also really great for learning about the universe, the Big Book of Stars and Planets, learning about the ocean, see inside oceans, and then we've got a children's encyclopedia, space dictionary, hurricanes, and a lot of these, like these little ones, I actually found at Goodwill, but they, just like if you're wanting to do just a short study on something, you can find a lot of these books. And then um, before we get over there, I just have these three posters. We have the Ten Commandments, we have the Lord's Prayer, and we have the Fruit of the Spirit. It's always important to keep that on the wall. And we have this art printable that I hung some twine with some little clothespins that we can put our little art papers on if we do them. This actually can be found in my shop. They are available for purchase if you are interested. And so here we have our craft table, as you can see. 
it is very painted. <laughs> this is um, a water dispenser that we use for co-op, but also for, you know, when we're thirsty up here. We've got these tubs to hold um, art supplies. Normally this table is actually over here. As you can see, there's paint on the floor over here, but it's fine if we keep it there. And Reagan just sits here and does painting and anything else that she's interested in. We have a three drawer organizing unit to keep construction paper, crafting supplies, everything like that. So with that moved, keep all of our supplies in there. And a fun little thing that I keep for organizing their, their schoolwork over the years is I have these two bins and I will show one of them. This is actually Reagan's bin. If you can see, I have different folders that have these hooks on them and I have them labeled for kindergarten. And this is her first grade work, second grade work, and we're working on third grade now. And then I keep her school shirt in that. Every year we do hand prints on the back. And that's how I organize all of their schoolwork. I think in Liam's fifth grade year, the, it is completely full. So probably next year I'll have to get him another bin. But that's just how, that's just a good example of how you can, that's how you can organize your classroom. And then one thing I will share is that we don't often, for people who don't have a room like this that they can spare in their home, we actually, yes, this is this room is a blessing. It is here for us. We have we, we have a place to keep our books and everything like that. But for those who don't have a room that they can call their own for school, we that is totally okay. We actually have a bin with all of our with all of our books in it that we're doing this year, and we actually just focus on uh, working at the kitchen table. That's where life is happening. That's where our bedrooms and our living room is downstairs. And so that's, uh, that's perfectly okay. If that's the only thing you have is just doing work at the, at the kitchen table, that's where we do it. So I want to show you the bin that I use that keeps all of their curriculum this year. It's just, it's actually just a handy tote. You can carry it wherever you can, a tote like that, you can take it with you if you're traveling and homeschooling, if you're, if you're a, um, a road trip family, if you're a, someone who likes to school at the park or go outside and do school, um, this would be very handy for you also. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that. Okay, so, um, and this is a, an example of another, if I didn't say it before, this is another example of a way you can homeschool, guilt-free, not having to worry if you have a, if have a separate homeschool room or things like that. This is totally suitable for any family. So here's our tote, our classroom in a bag. It has, it's actually, I believe from 31, my mom gifted it to me and I use it for school, but it has a pouch on the outside. It, I keep, you know, different tools that we need for the year, pencils, erasers, anything that I need quickly, I keep in that pouch. We've got our books. I have my binder that has, um, this is actually my homeschool planner. This is my own printable. You can also find that in my store as well. And it just, we have all of our books that we keep in here. As you can see, it's long enough for all kinds of, all kinds of books and standard size. So yeah, it's completely doable to have either a classroom or just a classroom in a bag. And wherever you feel more comfortable doing your homeschool. I mean, we have the luxury of, we're very blessed to have the room that we do, but we choose to, to do school at the kitchen table. So that's totally fine. You do not need to have a separate classroom. It's nice to have a place where you can put everything, a simple bookshelf in your living room or something like that will do as well. And so I hope that this video was enjoyable to you, that perhaps you could get some ideas of your own of how to better utilize your space for homeschooling. So that's all that we have for this video today. I hope that it was beneficial to you and stay tuned for more. I'm going to be adding our curriculum curriculum that we're using this year. In the next couple videos, we'll be doing, I'll be covering fifth grade curriculum we're using and third grade curriculum that you're, that we're using. And I'll link below in those videos, what I've linked for fourth grade, second grade, and first grade that I've done in the past. You can also find those in the homeschool playlist that will show up at the end of this video in the end screen. You can click that as well. So that's all for this video. And I hope that you enjoyed it. If you want to see more, 
please subscribe. And also if you want to see more of our family and what we're doing around here. So if you want to get to know us better, subscribe. And thank you all so much for watching. Bye. Say goodbye. Bye.